Um, yeah. All right. So um, starting by presenting um, LXC 1.0 and <coughs> our roadmap. So LXC 1.0 is going to be the first 3D really stable version of LXC. Um, people have been using LXC for a while now in production and it works great, but um, the readme for the project always said that it's not really recommended for production use until we release 1.0. 1.0 is actually coming up now. <laughs> um, that release um, is going to be a bit special because the past release was just three or four months of development. This one is massively more than that. Um, we've got uh, 10 months of development. So we started in April. Uh, we did the first alpha release uh, a couple of weeks back. Um, then we've got, an, we've got uh, milestones uh, every month until we actually release the thing in February. Um, the February time, uh, timeline happens to line up really well with Ubuntu uh, because Ubuntu 14.04 long time support release uh, will be releasing in April 2014. Um, so it will ship LXC 1.0. Um, that also means that um, as LXC will be part of that Ubuntu release, uh, Canonical will have a five years commitment for bug fixes and security fixes to that release of LXC. Um, so LXC 1.0 will essentially be supported for five years. Um, as all the fixes and all the changes we do in Ubuntu are always done upstream, we don't carry any delta um, on LXC itself. Now, looking at into features, um, that's some of the goals uh, for LX 1.0. As I said, we want something extremely stable. Um, most of the work we've been doing so far was from moving from a project <coughs> where we have a set of binaries that let you, you know, create, start, stop containers, manage them, to moving all those features into a library. Um, LibLXC, which we first released with LX 0.9 uh, back in April. Um, and basically rebasing all of our tools on that library. So all the tools that we have in the LXC branch are tools that people could have written using our public API. Um, that library also comes with a few bindings. So we've got uh, currently a Python 3, a Lua, and a Go binding for the library. Um, pretty much all in sync feature-wise. So we, we tend to make sure that all the bindings include all the features that are available in the in the library. Um, we also want to make the tools a bit more consistent. Um, a simple example was we used to have LXC stop, LXC halt, and LXC shutdown, um, all of which essentially doing the same thing. Um, we replaced that by just having, uh, I think we currently just have LXC stop or LXC shutdown basically do the right thing, uh, where it does, it first sends a signal to the container, wait for the container to try and clean the shutdown. If that fails, it kills it. Um, <laughs> And we try to make sure that all of those binaries have um, essentially take the same options um, so that people can basically guess how everything will work. Uh, we're also starting to try and get rid of uh, some of our shell scripts uh, because some of those were shell scripts and we're trying to move in them into either Python 3 or, um, or C. Um, that makes it simpler um, on a lot of uh, on a few distros, and also when working with Android, where they have a pretty minimal shell implementation, and not all the comments <laughs> exist, and yeah, the best you can get is busy box, and everything breaks. Um, so it's nice having binaries instead. Um, so as I said, um, we are mostly focusing on getting everything into a nice library everyone can use. Um, that also means that for LXC 1.0, we want that uh, we want to release the 1.0 version of that library, uh, and basically stick, uh, keep the API stable, and make sure people can rely on that, and that we won't start renaming all of the functions uh, a release later. Um, so that's why we've been trying to design LXC 1.0 and make sure that all the features we actually want in there are going to be ready and that we all agree on the API and that any change we need to do, we do it now uh, so that after February, people can really rely on that thing. Um, same thing for our internal communication protocol. Um, an issue we had in the past was um, we, uh, um, we basically have a Unix socket um, to communicate between um, the LXC start um, the um, init process in container and comments outside of it to query state to 
get the IP addresses, all that stuff. And if that protocol was to change between two releases, someone who had running containers would upgrade LXC, do like LXC info, and the container would take Um That wasn't really great, so we decided to try and stick to um, a well-defined protocol for that thing and not um, break compatibility there. So that in the worst case scenario, you run a command, it tells you, sorry, it's not supported by your container at this point, but at least it doesn't crash. Um, another thing, uh, we are planning on supporting um, from, the from the 2682 kernel all the way to whatever is uh, the current stable at the time we release in February. 2682 is mostly because uh, a lot of Red Hat-based distros are still on some kind of weird 2632, 2635, plus a ton of backports kind of kernel, but it's good to support 2632 for that. And also because um, the, the device I use for um, LXC development on Android runs on a 2632 kernel. Um, so I basically need that, or I need to get a new phone. Um, as I said, um, we work with Android as well, uh, so we want LXC 1.0 to be um, buildable with uh, EJLPC and with Bionic. Bionic is a bit tricky because not all the functions we want are there, so we need to write some wrapping code to make it possible. Um, and we well, often have to <coughs> remind people that their code won't quite be on, on Bionic and that they should avoid some functions. Um, <laughs> But it's currently working. You can take the current uh, Git add and build that and run on Android if you know how. I'm going to try and explain that later on. Um, Search has also been working uh, with the guys doing the Go binding and I think Dwight on trying to get LXC trade safe. Um, until now, it's not been a big issue because everything was separate binaries, so trades weren't a concern. Uh, but now that we've got a library and that some languages like Go tend to use threads quite a lot. Um, it makes sense to look back at the code and make sure that uh, we actually thread safe. Um, we are also doing a lot of work on templates. Um, we're supporting, I don't know, like a dozen <laughs> templates nowadays, something like that. Um, they're not all very consistent. The options tend to vary widely between them. Like I noticed yesterday that you can't actually pass a dash R parameter to the Debian template to tell it what release you want. You need to set an environment variable instead, which is completely obvious, apparently. So we, we need to fix that and try and get things a bit more consistent. Hmm? I think there's an open one. Yes. <laughs> there definitely is now. Um, <laughs> so trying to get templates to kind of agree on common functions, common parameters would be nice. Uh, making sure the templates actually work would be nice too. Um, and um, <coughs> ideally in a perfect world, making sure that the templates work across distros. So you can take um, Elixir and Fedora and create an Ubuntu container and vice versa. Um, we are pretty far from that specific goal, but maybe we'll make it, we'll, we'll see. And good documentation. Um, that's one thing we haven't really worked on currently for LXC 1.0, but we need a really good API and API binding uh, documentation with examples that people can go and see on our website or something and um, easily understand the API, easily understand how it's been designed, and easily understand how they're supposed to uh, use it for, for their workflow. So, um, as I said, uh, LXC 1.0 will be uh, part of uh, the next Ubuntu long-term support release. So Canonical will be doing at least security fixes for five years. Um, I personally uh, plan on doing at least two years of bug fix release uh, for LXC. <laughs> the way that's going to happen is um, when we release 1.0, we are going to just branch into a 1.0 uh, branch, branch and just get bug fixes in there. And whenever a distribution needs um, a release, we'll just release. Um, those will be bug fix only, so we won't backport any feature. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I really hope that most um, Alexi developers will be kind enough to figure out that a specific bug fix probably also affected previous releases and that they'll uh, basically tag it as also affecting stable so we can cherry pick that thing and get it fixed. Um, I've also, for the past couple of months, uh, been running some testing infrastructure. Uh, basically, once a day, I 
build LXC on, well, uh, that machine runs Ubuntu, but I'm building it on H56, MD64, Armit Chef. Um, we also run that stuff through Coverity um, to find new issues to aesthetic analysis. And I'm also cross-building to Android and then running a bunch of tests uh, that um, we have to st stress test the API and to um, do standard tests, like trying all the templates. And that's happening every day. Currently, it's not blocking anything, but the plan is to move that to at least send a report um, to the Alexi developer mailing list so that if someone breaks something, they'll get an email pretty quickly about it. Um, so, yeah, that and long term support is pretty much a plan for 1.0. Uh, after that, we'll, so as soon as 1.0 releases, we'll start working on 1.1 and get new features and stuff in there. But I expect uh, at least Serge and I to spend a significant amount of time supporting 1.0 as we've been supporting um, some weird snapshot of 0 0.9 in the previous long term support release of Ubuntu. Um, did I have anything? No. So that, that's pretty much the, the picture, I think, for LXC uh, 1.0. Um, unless you can think of anything else, Serge? <laughs> oh, I didn't cover uh, the f some of the cool stuff you did. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, one, one new uh, feature uh, of LXC uh, 1.0 is um, we have a new backing store um, kind of plugin system where we can now, uh, uh, everyone can hook into that to, sub, to, to create container on, uh, based on what, uh, BT, uh, BTRFS, ZFS, uh, OverlayFS, LVM, uh, I think that's about it. And for all of those, uh, we support creating containers, we support uh, snapshotting uh, and cloning containers. Mm -hmm. So, that makes it a bit more flexible. In the past, we used to have various scripts knowing about various file systems, and moving all of that uh, into uh, the LXE library directly makes it much simpler to, to look into. And basically give the same kind of uh, interface that some people expect for VMs, but we now have that for containers. So you can easily create a container, use overlayFS, and then snapshot five times a container, and you can access a, uh, any of those snapshots if you want. Um, I guess it's something that's going to be pretty useful for uh, the guys working like on Docker or some of those um, some of those source. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it for LXC 1.0. Um, do we have any questions? Okay, that's good, I guess. Uh, <laughs>